Socialist Bernie Sanders under fire during last night's debate over his love affair with Fidel. What I said is what Barack Obama said in terms of Cuba, that Cuba made progress on education. Yes, I think, really? <clears throat> Really? Yes, Literacy because there's no comparing are bad those. when dictatorships, whether it is the Chinese or the Cubans, do something good. Huh. You acknowledge that. Hi, Mr. But you don't have trade right. love letters with that. That was just the start of Bernie's problems. The Democratic frontrunner getting hit from all sides. Imagine spending the better part of 2020 with Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. I want to have someone in charge of this ticket who wants to put forward $60 trillion in spending, three times the Thank American you, economy. Oh, I Whitaker. don't think we do. You talk about what we're talking about with Bernie. Bernie, in fact, hasn't passed much of anything. I dug in, I did the work, and then Bernie's team trashed me for it. Bernie. 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 Bernie Sanders. I'm hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. <laughs> I, I wonder why. <laughs> All right, so he got the front runner treatment last night. Dana, I just, I don't think the attacks are sharp enough and, and they bleed him out. I think he survives. Also, why are they just doing it now? Yeah, they waited uh, too long. Bernie Sanders has had these positions for so long and they waited until he's already amassed a delegates and he's got a foothold in the race and he's basically saying yeah I know all of you are attacking me 33 times compared to Bloomberg 17 in this debate because I have the leg up but all of those attacks that are coming from within his own party are not going to look very good in general election ads that President Trump's team will run against Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. and the fact that Bernie isn't going to change his mind I mean maybe that works with Bernie I will say this I do think that his team has a much better campaign than the Hillary Clinton team. Like they're super, they're organized, they're quick, they're kind of funny, they're everywhere. Did you see what they're doing in Minnesota, going right into Klobuchar's backyard right before Super Tuesday with a band I didn't recognize, the Night Shifts or something or something like that. Anyway, if you um, don't know the band, Greg does. <laughs> I know. I'm sure if I, I'm going to find the band for you and tell you. But basically, he's they're they're super aggressive and they're smart and I think that. These things won't look good in a general election ad, but I don't think it hurts him in the primary. <laughs> Greg, t explain to me why Bernie feels the need to say good things about bad people. Well, you know, it's, it's like like he was ha kind of half right on Cuba. Cuba didn't uh, ma make improvements in education. They made improvements in re-education. <laughs> they got a little confused. And then when they asked him how he was going to pay for his stuff, he said, how much time do you have? So he couldn't even do it then. But the scary part about for the Dems, despite all that, He's still their best speaker. When he's up there, he knows how to shut people up by uh, he gets in front, he gets out there, he starts yeah. talking, and then he's not going to let the sentence <laughs> yeah. end, and he keeps going and he keeps going. And meanwhile, you have Buttigieg doing the under talk. Well, here I am over here, you know, actually, <laughs> molecules, molecules are tiny substances. <laughs> and he's going, I'm over here and I'm talking and I'm relaxed and I'm confident. And, that's, and I see that and I go, Bernie is really good. He, out of there, he might be the most formidable against Trump on the debate stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, what do you think, Juan? I, I think Trump would chew him up alive. I mean, Bernie, who? Bernie Sanders, one-on-one. Oh. On one. Bernie has never really had to defend these crazy positions one-on-one. On one. Well, I think that's what he's doing No, now. this is like a field of seven or eight. I mean, one-on-one well, on one with think, Trump zeroing in. I think he would... You know what? If you remember the line, of, you know, if you wanted the who's the real socialist, the guy who's giving money to the rich... You know, I mean, they, it'd be pretty strong. So I don't think that that's the problem. I think the problem is, and this is something that we have discussed, so maybe they're watching The Five, okay. which is that left-wing people, in general, are too open to folks like Castro or mm -hmm. uh, the Ortega. kind of liberation movements in Latin America or Northern Ireland, the Palestine. They always, they're always going to somehow say, you know what, this is the resistance. We understand you're up against the man, the big corporate interest, American military power. Uh, and the, the problem is that they so often these movements turn out to be not good people. And I can tell you from my family history, people who oppress and who are discriminatory. And then, you know, like the, you know, the Sandinistas, you say, oh, my God, how do we get involved with them? I, what, the other day we were talking about uh, the woman in what's, what Asian country who is now, you know, going at, was it Myanmar going after the... Myanmar? Myanmar, yeah, going after the, 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 the dissidents and the minorities in her country. And, you know, they gave her the Nobel Aung Prize. Aung San Suu Kyi. There you go. So I think that there's a problem in that regard. But my point is, I don't think, Jesse, that it moves the needle for, Jess, for Bernie's supporters. I think if you're right. a guy yeah. 
right. in York, Pennsylvania, and you say, you know what, I can't pay my health care premium in this country. I can't yeah, send my kids to college. you don't care what he says about Castro. Yeah, yeah, the hell with Castro. Sure. If he's going to solve that problem for me, you're my guy, Bernie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cuba, the Cuba utopia of health care and whatever else they say is free and good and literacy has been a staple of the left since the Cuban Revolution. I mean, this is something that they have praised. It's been indoctrinated in college classrooms for decades. That's nothing new. But where it's really going to hurt Bernie in a general election is the first thing, his taxes. He's going to raise taxes on every single person in America, which he admits. He's going to take away your health insurance. The Green New Deal he supports is going to cost an average family $75,000 just for the first year, which is double the average of what an American family actually makes in a year. And then the other thing is, if Bernie Sanders were to somehow win the White House, which I don't think that you should count him out at this point because we don't know, the squad is going to be running everything. Mm -hmm. AOC will be put in charge of something. All of her staffers will get positions in the White House. Uh, Rashida Tlaib will get a position somewhere and all of her people will come with oh, her and be running the federal what government. What position Ilhan, would AOC get? I don't know. But Ilhan Omar, same thing. She'll come in, be appointed to something, some Along position. with her brother? They could be... Uh, uh, maybe with her brother, yes. Yeah, they but move the in point together. is that, you know, this is an entire restructuring of America that Bernie Our Sanders ratings is would skyrocket. I think that's wow. it. That's a legitimate I, point. You have convinced me this yeah. would be a terrible for the country. We're gonna have no money. Another five would get no like. Money. Well, I don't know. I'm Mick, switching parties. <laughs> Mick Mulvaney. Right.